Uh, my name is David Corey with the Emotional Intelligence Training Company, uh, and I'm so glad that you tuned in and you are watching this webinar from wherever you happen to be. The webinar will be recorded in its entirety, and so you'll have an opportunity if you want to come back. If you can't stay for the whole thing, we're just going to take 30 minutes of your time today. Uh, and so, uh, so thank you, everyone, for, for joining us and for being here. So we're here to talk about EQ Coaching for Drive. Why EQ Coaching? Because we believe that understanding more about emotional intelligence skills that, uh, that we measure by, by measuring EQ, we use those terms interchangeably, EQ and emotional intelligence, and I hope you don't mind that we do that, uh, but it's, it's helpful. Uh, and and, um, uh, and, and if, we, if we can understand more about drive, if we can understand more about what motivates people in terms of looking at that through an EQ lens, I think it can be really helpful for those of you who have struggled with motivation, who are struggling with motivation, and for those of you who uh, would like to help others, who, who are coaches, who work with clients, who struggle with motivation, I think this, uh, this quick little webinar can help you uh, to understand more about motivation and to know how to help people in uh, using the, e the EQ model that we use. All right, so so let's uh, let's just uh, jump in here. Take a quick look at our agenda for the day. So we're going to be talking about the different. We're, we're, first of all, we'll talk about what we mean by drive. What we mean by the what's the difference between drive and motivation, if any? And again, it's a little bit like EQ and motivation. There, there's not much difference. There's a, some difference, and and we do use them interchangeably. And um, and then let's talk about what, uh, what are the different EQ competencies that are related to drive? What are the EQ competencies that are going to help you to help your client uh, in a more direct and focused way to assist them with their motivation issues? Uh, we'll give you a quick summary and then jump into questions. So please think of questions as you go through, type them in the chat box, uh, and we'll uh, do our best in the last uh, 10 minutes or so to uh, to help with the, with all the all the questions that you have, okay. So let's um, uh, let's press on, shall we? Uh, and uh, let's let's press on with our very first poll. Which of the following have you experienced? So you'll see a little poll come up on your screen there, uh, and uh, you can check as many as you have uh, experienced in your career in your life. Uh, what uh, what ways have you been affected by, uh, by motivation issues? And, and so, you know, we've got feeling disinterested. That's a mild form of, uh, of motivation uh, issue or struggle. Uh, there's a feeling like you're not accomplishing your goals. That may be a bit a bigger, more serious. Feeling like you're spinning your wheels, that what you're doing is not effective or less effective than you'd like it to be. Uh, or possibly feeling discouraged, which we can all feel from time to time. Or wondering why you're doing what you're doing. That's a bigger, more serious issue around motivation. Uh, and, and of course, feeling unappreciated. Uh, when we work in an organization uh, and we've... Um, uh, you know, we, we're, we're doing things, uh, hopefully, that are appreciated by others and we don't get that appreciation or we don't feel that appreciation. And of course, that's another thing that affects our motivation. Uh, all right. So, uh, uh, so very interestingly, most people have, as I suspected, clicked most things. So, so uh, people are feeling, have felt disinterested. They, they have felt like they've not, they're not accomplishing their goals, like they're spinning their wheels, feeling discouraged, etc. So thanks so much for, uh, for taking the poll, end our poll there, and we're going to move on. Uh, and um, yeah, so so thanks so much. The the one that got the most votes was feeling like you're spinning your wheels, and uh, and absolutely, I can totally relate that all the things that you're doing to try to to uh, if you're a small business owner to increase your business, if you're an employee to uh, to get recognition from uh, from your managers, all these things are of course very demotivating when you don't see the results. So let's uh, let's press on, and we'll we'll talk about uh, for for a moment the difference between drive and motivation. So there is a slight difference. So motivation is the general desire to achieve a goal in life, and of course there are many types of of uh, of motivation. 
Um, and we're going to actually talk a little bit about in, internal or intrinsic motivation and external or extrinsic motivation. Uh, and what we're differentiating here is just to say that, um, uh, that internal motivation could be thought of as an individual's personal drive. And we sometimes refer to, to, uh, to intrinsic motivation as drive. Now I selected this image at the bottom of the, of the slide with, with this individual standing at the bottom of a mountain looking up at a trophy or some sort of reward. And I wondered, is this intrinsic or extrinsic motivation? And, uh, and, and you could actually, yes, I'm happy to send the slide deck. Someone asked if, if we could do that, and, and of course we can. So, so yeah, we'll make the slide deck available to everyone who's registered. Uh, and so, um, so is this extrinsic or intrinsic motivation? Now, it would depend on the reason that the individual would climb the mountain. If it's just for the reward at the top, and climbing the mountain is just something you got to do in order to do that, then that's extrinsic motivation or external motivation. Now, if this person uh, says, hey, there's a reward at the top, but you know what, this is going to be great, and I'm going to really uh, you know, enjoy and feel fulfilled by climbing this by the climb itself, then that's intrinsic motivation. And I have another slide that, that demonstrates it nicely as well. Uh, so, so we've got these different types and kinds of motivation. Now, when you think of the, of the word drive, you may think of the famous book by Daniel Pink called Drive. Uh, and uh, and uh, I, it's a book that I have started, like many books that I've started. Uh, I lose interest really quickly in books and think I know what's at the end. So I have a, have a lot of half-read books. But, but uh, the Drive is one I, I noted that it was an excellent book, very well written, as all of his books are. Uh, and uh, and so, he, I, so I decided to uh, include a little video from him. It's just short, just a few minutes, and hopefully you'll, you'll be able to hear the audio as well. Uh, and, uh, but let me know if you can't, uh, and, um, and then we'll, we'll make sure that you have a link to the video afterwards as well. But let's take a couple of minutes and watch this video from Daniel Pink. Here it goes. There's a really interesting and really exciting batch of research showing that one of the most powerful tools that leaders have at their disposal is a tool they keep leaving in the toolbox, and that tool is called purpose, explaining to people not only how to do something, but why to do it in the first place. When people know why they're doing something, they do it a lot better. And yet, a lot of our leadership is about how, not about why. And what's missing is that people out there are yearning, well, why are we doing it in the first place? Why does it matter? Why does it contribute to a larger whole? Why does my piece of it make a difference? That This is about the cheapest performance enhancer we have in organizations large and small. So I think one of the single best management techniques that you can deploy is this. As you're watching this, in the next week, have two fewer conversations about how and two more about why. So if you find yourself as a leader having that conversation about how, here's how, uh, stop yourself. And instead turning into a conversation about why. Here's why we do this. Here's why what you do matters. And I think you will see an uptick in performance because it's the nature of human beings to wonder why does it matter? Why are we here? And we can't dismiss that as something soft or ethereal. It's actually very, very hard-headed. One of the keys to a workforce that's truly motivated is autonomy. But to understand this concept, we have to understand another word, and that word is management. We take this word way too seriously. We think that management has always been here, that it emanated from nature. But that's not the case. Management is simply a technology. It's something that some guy invented. And that guy who invented it, invented it in the 1850s. So it's a very, very old technology. Management is a great technology if you want compliance. If you want people to do what you want them to do the way you want them to do it. But for true success, for true growth, you don't want a compliant workforce. You want an engaged workforce. You want people to be engaged. And the funny thing about human beings is that they don't engage by being managed. The way that human beings engage is by getting there under their own steam. So the proper technology for engagement is self-direction. 
self-direction. You want to create an environment where people have some control over what they do, how they do it, when they do it, and who they do it with. What employees love, actually what all of us love, is being able to do something today that we didn't know how to do last year. That's progress. That's mastery. They're getting better at something that matters. And so if people have a sense of moving forward, of getting better, of progressing, that's what mastery is really all about. And it's something that is inherently motivating. The challenge is that we're not especially good at putting people in positions where they make progress or helping them see the progress they're making. And one of the reasons for that is that progress depends on feedback. The only way you know whether you're getting better, the only way you know whether you're moving forward is if you're getting information on how you're doing. You know, I think one of the key principles of, of leadership in entrepreneurial companies or any kind of organization is the principle of talking less and listening more. And one way to listen more is simply to ask questions. What are you working on is a great question. Not in an accusatorial way, what are you working on? But what are you working on? How's it going? Um, anything I can do to make it a little bit easier? What are some of the obstacles that you're facing? What are some barriers in the way of doing your job better? You build your organization around progress, and if you come up with ways to give people feedback so they know they're making progress, you're going to have a supremely, supremely motivated workforce. Uh, you know, he, he talked about a couple of things that were really important, and I, I had to laugh to myself when he talked about feedback, because I didn't know that you didn't hear the audio until I got the feedback from you. So, uh, so how do we know that we're on course? How do we know that we're doing what we need to be doing? Of course, it is through feedback. And, uh, and I love the idea of mastery, that we, uh, that we crave mastery, that we look forward to mastery, that we, that we love mastery, and, uh, and, and it's motivating for us human beings. And, and so, so here's our, our little summary of intrinsic and extrinsic motivation. And then we'll turn to the EQ factors involved. So, uh, so I like this, here's this little guy and, uh, well, not so little, but uh, soccer player. He says, um, you know, when you're motivated to perform an activity to earn a reward or avoid punishment, right? If, you, uh, if you're just doing it to win, uh, or you're doing it to avoid getting recriminations from a coach, uh, from an athletic coach, or your soccer coach, et cetera, then of course, uh, that's extrinsic motivation. But intrinsic motivation is because you love to play the game. You love the work that you do, et cetera. Uh, and, uh, and you do it e maybe even if they didn't pay you. And, uh, and so, so let's, let's take a, a quick little... A uh, little poll here where we look at intrinsic motivation and the other is extrinsic motivation. Uh, and my guess is a lot of people on the webinar today are going to click number one, the first one, because, um, uh, because they're coaches, they're consultants, they're, they're working in an area where they, they love to help people and support people towards their goals, et cetera. Uh, and and you, would, uh, you would check number two, I love my work because it allows me to do what I love after work. You'd be doing that if, you, if the job was not a great job, if it wasn't a great fit for you if, it's, if you, if it's a stepping stone to other things. And now we've all probably had those jobs in our careers where those jobs have been a stepping stone to other things. And then, uh, and, and then it's, you know, I love my work because it's getting me where I need to go. Because, you know, when I'm done here, I can, I have the money that I need to go and uh, take care of my family, pay my bills, have fun, whatever that might be. So, so most, and, and as I, as I guess, you know, we've got most of you uh, saying that, um, that you do love your work because you, you get paid for doing what you love to do, uh, which is awesome. And of course, that's what we want for the majority of humankind. Uh, and unfortunately, we're not there yet. We still have a lot of people who uh, are doing the, their, their work, not because they love their work, uh, but, uh, but because of, of what it gives them, what it provides for them. So let's, uh, let's move on and we'll, um, uh, we'll look at First of all, just remind you of the model that we use. This is the model that um, you know in the in the history of the world is the very one of the first 
uh, rigorously scientific, systematic, empirical approaches to emotional intelligence. Uh, and it was Reuven Baron, and it was, he started in 1981. He, were, he wasn't working on emotional intelligence so much as he was working on what he called emotional and social functioning, which you see in the, in the outer ring at the very top of the model. Uh, and then later on, it was renamed emotional intelligence when emotional intelligence gained prominence and fame. Uh, and because people were looking for a usable, applicable model, how am I going to develop my emotional intelligence? Well, you're going to look at these 15 empirically, sorry, these 15 empirically driven skills and competencies that are measured by the emotional quotient inventory, which we use and we teach people how to use. Uh, and uh, and then it's about understanding the the application of these competencies uh, and uh, and the understanding that. Each one is required to be effective at work and in life, uh, et cetera. So uh, for coaches, fantastic blueprint for, uh, for working with clients and helping clients. So how might you use this with respect to motivation or drive? Well, uh, the, the first thing that we want to look at in relationship to motivation or drive is self-regard. Because how you view yourself, again, as, uh, um, not again, but as, as either confident and competent and worthy and deserving, or none of these things, it actually determines what you do. So in the image there, we've got this idea of, first of all, setting a goal. Well, you're going to set your goals depending on how you view yourself either as worthy and deserving of having big goals and, and achieving big things or not. Uh, and so it's important and critical that we actually look at self-regard and understand self-regard in terms of motivation or drive because, again, the, that um, uh, you know, when we feel uh, confident and competent to achieve our goals, it's far more motivating than we, we have goals that we've set for ourselves where we don't feel confident and competent to, to work toward those or move towards those. Um, you know, in some cases we call those goals that are just, uh, that, that require a lot of effort on our part, we call them stretch goals because they cause us and force us to stretch towards those goals. But if, uh, if we feel like they're out of reach and we're still we're stretching and, and pushing to reach them, then we'll start to feel demotivated and we'll start to feel a lack of drive and wonder what's going on there. So first and foremost, as a coach who's looking to our EQ model to help people with drive or motivation, we wanna take a look at self-regard and have a conversation around self-regard and help people view themselves and, uh, and, and, and help them with that. And, and coaching self-regard is not easy uh, because we're actually talking about a set of beliefs that people have about themselves. And, and those beliefs are on occasion um, tightly held. And, and difficult to change and modify. Uh, and in some cases, coaches can help with that. And, uh, and in some cases, people actually may need to see a counselor and go back in their lives to look at how their self-regard was determined in, a way, in such a way that it does not serve them well. So, so that's self-regard. Let's move on and take a look at another EQ competency that plays a critical and, and important role uh, in motivation. So self-actualization is all about what you involve yourself in. I saw this book title and I just thought it was funny and, uh, and so I included it. Uh, it says, screw work, let's play. How to do what you love and get paid for it. And that, that's what we're talking about here, doing what you love and having that self-actualization, that that feeling that what you're involved in has meaning and a sense of purpose for you and determines your level of motivation. There's a connection to our personal values. And whenever we talk about values, we have to look at and, and speak to a, another critical EQ competency, which is emotional self-awareness. So how do we know what our values are? How do we know whether our activities align with our values? Well, it's through emotional self-awareness. And so emotional self-awareness allows us to know our values and know when we're experiencing fulfillment, knowing when we are operating in alignment and in, a, in accordance with our values. So we encourage everyone, and it is, is absolutely possible in, in creative ways to align what you do for work 
uh, for uh, for to make the 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 money that you need in order to live, uh, and align that with your values and and with your goals. And uh, sometimes when we're uh, you know just starting our careers, that's more difficult. Uh, and um, uh, and again, it it requires um, you know creativity, requires learning, knowledge, and and often requires a coach to to help and support the journey. Uh, so I've, I've chosen this little image uh, where we've got this Venn diagram where where if you look at it and see the, the things that overlap, it's kind of interesting, you know, uh, it, 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 there is a part of what you're great at, you know, where, what are your gifts and what are your talents? So that's one thing. Uh, and then, you know, what do you love? What do you love to do? Uh, and what does the world need? Uh, and then, you know, um, uh, you want to make sure that there is, as my friend Hugh Culver says, a hungry market willing to pay you for, uh, for again, what you're great at, what you love, and what the world needs. Uh, and so in, in looking at the overlaps for the Venn diagram, you find purpose at the center. Uh, and it's a, it's a great little image that's very helpful and useful in terms of, uh, of, of helping to understand more about motivation of what motivates, what motivates us, and again, what motivates others. So just going back for a moment, self-actualization is about what we involve ourselves in. Do we involve ourselves in work that has meaning and a sense of purpose? And, uh, and if you remember Maslow's pyramid, the, there, are, there is a hierarchy of needs. So we do have to look at it and make sure that people have basic needs met first and then they're able to go after higher order needs like self-actualization uh, and, and this this incredible connection to values uh, and uh, when when it happens for us and when we have a sense of self-actualization uh, it's a it's a wonderful place to be uh, and and uh, we should also acknowledge and recognize and understand our, our privilege for being in that place that we do have uh, you know food and shelter needs taken care of uh, and, and we have other needs taken care of before we get to this place of self-actualization. So, okay, so if there's a summary here, and then we'll go to questions, and I really do want to hear your questions, so please type them into the chat box. Drive is the result of intrinsic motivation. Uh, and uh, and again, you know, we sometimes use those that terminology loosely, and uh, and really, it doesn't really matter whether you call it motivation or whether you call it drive. But uh, but again, intrinsic motivation is more closely related with this concept of drive, the result of feeling worthy and deserving of doing what has meaning and purpose for you, uh, and that's that's that self regard piece, self actualization, the extent to which what you do has meaning and purpose for you, as measured by your level of fulfillment. And finally, emotional self-awareness allows us to know if we're operating in accordance with our values. That's that, that monitoring piece, that, that staying on top of and, and, and knowing uh, when we're living out of, uh, uh, out of our values or in alignment with our values. And it's going to be a really important um, monitor for us. All right, so that's, that's our, our quick summary. I, again, I chose this, this little saying over here, the meaning of life is to find your gift, the purpose of life is to give it away. Uh, and uh, when we're you know, using our gifts and our talents fully, and, uh, and, and when we're doing you know, what has meaning and a sense of purpose for us, it's very fulfilling uh, and um, very motivating to uh, get out of bed every morning and get to it. And, and interesting when, you know, on those days when it is more difficult to get out of bed and get to it. And, and for, for those of us who work alone um, or, um, you know, with a, with a geographically dispersed team, uh, that can be somewhat demotivating as well, is that, you know, you, you, you get up in the morning and you just kind of feel like, oh, you know, there is this thing that I love to do, but it seems far away. So we kind of really need to reconnect that. And, I, and so, you know, I, I need to imagine myself up in front of a room full of people uh, doing what I love, which is uh, the, 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 the public speaking and the training and, uh, and doing the, that keynote at that conference. And, and that motivates me to do the work that I need to do in order to make all of those things happen. So it is reconnect.
reconnecting to values, reconnecting to purpose that is going to be motivating and, uh, and, and going to help with drive on those occasions when we feel like our drive is, is waning or, or a bit less. Okay, so what is your beautiful question for me at this point? Uh, please type those in the chat box um, uh, and we'll, we'll take a look at those. Uh, and um, yeah, so uh, again, just going back over the, the, through the chat box. Um, yes, we'll send you the slides. We'll send you a link to the, to the video. Uh, and yeah, I highly encourage you to take a look at Daniel Pink's book, Drive. It's a, it's a really great, um, a really great book. And uh, again, a couple of the things that, that maybe he said when the, when the, the audio was, was, uh, was lost was have too fewer conversations about how and two more conversations about why. Uh, and I thought it was a great idea. And of course, uh, Simon Sinek wrote his book, uh, It's All Why, or Find Your Why uh, as well. And again, connecting back to purpose and, and meaning and, and really understanding the reasons for why we do the things that we do uh, is much more motivating than the how. Uh, and that, that was Daniel Pink's first point. Uh, and so he goes on to make other points uh, in his book, the, the connection with mastery and, uh, and this idea of engagement. And, and engagement is when we are allowed to be uh, creative and, uh, and resourceful um, uh, and use the whole of who we are. And um, in contrast to compliance, as, uh, as Daniel Pink also says, that management is about getting compliance from people. And it's, you know, traditionally been the way that organizations have run. And still, you still find pockets of, uh, of the world and pockets of, uh, of organizations where, uh, where they cling to this idea of management versus leadership. And where you've got people who are, um, uh, who are not trained as leaders. And, and of course, uh, they come by it honestly, as, uh, as I frequently talk about the, this idea that, that we, sit, we, we promote people into positions of management because they're technically good at what they do. Uh, and so uh, and we overlook this idea of having them understand more about engagement, more about meaning, more about purpose, more about how to share insights from uh, a place of, uh, from a privileged place of expertise with others so that they can then, um, uh, they can then find their meaning and, and their purpose in what it is that they do. Uh, all right, so, uh, so questions for me. So, uh, okay. Um, what we've got is, um, just seeing what other options we have for, for questions here and uh, questions. So what if someone scores low in self-actualization? Well, um, scoring low in self-actualization on the EQI is quite frequently uh, rooted to what's happening at the time. As, as our EQI scores, by the way, they are a snapshot in time. And so sometimes they do reveal the, the idea that someone is in a, the wrong role uh, or in the wrong job where, where they're not experiencing a great sense of, of personal satisfaction or meaning. Uh, and so, uh, so then you, you can have a conversation and explore you know, what's good about their, their role, what's not so good about their role that they're in and wondering if there are ways to make the role that they're in more, um, uh, have more meaning and more purpose. Uh, there's lots of great stories out there and uh, about people who have fairly low level jobs, who um, by looking at them differently and understanding more about, uh, more about, um, more, more about how they're, how what they do connects with something that is larger or, or has a greater meaning and purpose, then they can find more uh, fulfillment in that role. Uh, all right, so how does social responsibility intersect, intersect with, with drive? Um, yeah, excellent, excellent question. And, and of course, what, uh, 
uh, the, the question connects one of our other EQ competencies, social responsibility, with this idea of, um, uh, of drive and uh, specifically extrinsic drive. Uh, and, you know, when I think of social responsibility and drive, my first connection is with, uh, with intrinsic motivation because I think that a lot of us drive a lot of, of uh, fulfillment, satisfaction, sense of meaning and purpose in social responsibility. So in giving to others, in being part of a group, in volunteering, in, in looking for how others can benefit from what we, what we have to offer. Uh, and however, the, the idea of extrinsic drive uh, is interesting uh, and it, with respect to social responsibility. Uh, and I guess that uh, some people, and maybe, maybe, maybe this can be better seen in the context of a corporate um, identity and, and corporate social responsibility. So I think companies do uh, are some, some companies are involved in social responsibility because of extrinsic motivation. They, they want to be seen as good corporate citizens to improve and increase their, uh, their customer loyalty, uh, et cetera, customer satisfaction. And so I think in that way, you can connect social responsibility with extrinsic motivation or extrinsic drive. Can we coach for drive by connecting people to team goals and team belonging? And I, I, I think there are many ways to connect, uh, connect people to, um, uh, to their own motivation, uh, one of which might be um, being involved in team goals and team belonging. And of course, uh, it is a need that we human beings have for belonging. Uh, and so absolutely, when people really learn how to work in teams in a more effective way, uh, then uh, of course, there's that sense of belonging and that sense of team goals, which is very motivating. So ab absolutely. So I, I guess you know what the, what the questions bring up are that there are a lot of ways to increase motivation and increase drive by connecting people to values that maybe in some cases they don't they don't even know they have. Uh, and then once they discover them, in the case of people who say, you know, I'm not a team player, I just leave me alone to work on my own, and then they become part of a team and realize. The, that, that that actually is a fulfilling and rewarding experience, uh, then, um, uh, then, then that, that could be a, a good thing. Um, I, someone is, uh, is tell, letting me know that they enjoyed the presentation. Thank you, you're so welcome. Uh, and uh, at, at this point, I think we're going to, oh, one more quick question. Uh, so um, how do we deal with sociopaths or other neurodivergent people? Uh, neurodivergent, that's, there's an interesting word. Um, how do we deal with sociopaths? Uh, I, again, you know, we're, we're talking about people who, who struggle with emotions and have difficulty uh, in making connections with other people. And, uh, and, and those, uh, those difficulties, those connections are, are considered to be uh, pathological. Uh, in the medical community, and so perhaps uh, you know that um, we we might encourage those people if we're aware of them to to seek assistance, to, to seek help by showing them the uh, the impact of their behavior on the bottom line of the organization. If we've got people frequently transferring out of their department or frequently quitting and leaving the organization, talent that we can't afford then we can make an argument for people dealing with uh, with uh, types of pathology, uh, and. Um, yeah, I, I would say the, the, there's probably a long answer to that question, uh, and it's, it's a challenge to answer that. Uh, so I'm going to press on, and uh, we'll just go to our last slide here. So, you know, uh, thank you very much. We're going to quick wrap up here. Thank you so much for uh, joining us today uh, on our first live stream webinar. We'll continue to do that in future, and uh, we'll just get better at it with time. And so thank you. Check our website for 20th Anniversary Limited Time Special Offers. Uh, if you've not taken the EQI certification course, check that out. Uh, check out our next Leading with Emotional Intelligence course. We've got Heart and Science of Leadership for Women courses coming up this fall. Uh, and, uh, and of course, our wonderful online Writing for Emotional Intelligence course. Very uh, low barrier way to improve your emotional intelligence. And consider taking the EQI or the EQ360. We're happy to set that up for you. And you can simply send a message to david at eitrainingcompany.com and visit our website for more information. 
Thank you, everyone. I want to wish you a wonderful day from now on and, uh, and, and look for our future uh, free webinars that we'll continue to offer. So thanks, everyone. Really appreciate you joining us today. And I'm going to end the webinar there. So thank you.